Hi, I'm Denise Willis, and I'm going to discuss the Editor's Choice paper from the September issue of Respiratory Care, Effects of Mechanical Insufflation Exufflation on Sputum Volume in Mechanically Ventilated Critically Ill Subjects by Roberto Martinez Alejos and colleagues. Just a little bit about myself, I am a research respiratory therapist at Arkansas Children's Hospital, and I am also a section editor for the Respiratory Care Journal. I do not have any conflicts of interest. We know that just the presence of the endotracheal tube itself decreases the ability to produce an effective cough, and endotracheal suctioning only removes peripheral secretions. Expiratory rib cage compression administered before suctioning can enhance expiratory flow and help facilitate the movement of secretions. Mechanical insufflation exufflation simulates a cough effort to help clear secretions from the proximal airways. The aim of this study was to evaluate the effects of mechanical inexufflation in clearing secretions after use of expiratory rib cage compression in a prospective randomized crossover trial. Inclusion criteria were adults invasively ventilated for more than 48 hours with an endotracheal tube size of 7.0 to 8.0 and an agitation sedation score of minus 3 to minus 5. Subjects were excluded if they had lung trauma, emphysema, pneumothorax, ventilator-associated barotrauma, or pulmonary instability as evidenced by a PEEP more than 10, pulse oximetry less than 90%, or mean arterial pressure less than 65 millimeters of mercury. All subjects received both interventions of rib cage compression alone and in combination with mechanical inexufflation followed by suctioning. Subjects were randomized for which intervention was received first. The volume of wet sputum was the primary outcome, and blood gases, hemodynamics, and respiratory mechanics were assessed at baseline at the end of each intervention and then reassessed at one hour afterwards. There was a four-hour washout period between the interventions. The Wilcoxon test, Friedman test, linear regression, and analysis of covariance were some of the statistical analyses used. 100 subjects were screened for eligibility and 26 of those met inclusion criteria. Three subjects did not complete the study because they were awake before the protocol was finished. The mean age was 61 years and the majority of subjects were female and most were in ICU for abdominal surgery. The authors found that the volume of sputum attained with the combination of expiratory rib cage compression and mechanical inexufflation was significantly more compared to rib cage compression alone. They also found a significant correlation of peak inspiratory flow with peak expiratory flow and bias flow during inexufflation. Compliance improved significantly after inexufflation, but that effect tapered off within an hour. Both interventions caused an increased heart rate, but that increase was greater when rib cage compression was used alone. Oxygenation was significantly increased one hour after the combined treatment compared to rib compression alone. This is the first clinical trial that has evaluated rib cage compression and inexufflation in critically ill adults who were sedated, intubated, and mechanically ventilated. Previous studies that evaluated this therapy in ventilated subjects primarily focused on adults with neurological impairment, whereas this study included a more diverse ICU population. Mechanical inexufflation is commonly used with neuromuscular disease due to respiratory muscle weakness, but it may also have a role in other conditions with impaired cough efforts such as ICU-acquired weakness and post-surgical pain. Now, there were a few episodes of brief desaturation that occurred with both interventions, but none of those were considered clinically important. And as with all studies, this study had some limitations. The sample size was relatively small with only 26 subjects, and the therapist could not be blinded to which intervention they were administering. And there were also two different methods for manual rib cage compression, but it is not known which type was used or for how long it was administered, so it is possible that one method could have some advantages over another. The authors concluded that the combination of expiratory rib cage compression and mechanical inexufflation increased the volume of sputum compared to rib cage compression alone, and that the use of in mechanical inexufflation in this group of patients was safe and resulted in short-term improvement in respiratory compliance. 
Thank you for tuning in. You can reach me by email at denise.willis at aarc.org and be sure to follow Respiratory Care on Facebook and Twitter.